Welcome back to my channel. Somehow it is already the end of October, so we are doing my very first reading wrap up on YouTube. I um, did not have the best reading month. Um, I really only managed to get as many things done as I did because I read short stories. Um, but I, I will say that I pretty much enjoyed everything that I did read this month. Uh, I didn't give anything below three stars, which is nice. I, I like my months where even if I don't get a lot done, at least I had a good time while reading what I did read. I started the month off with Bone White. Uh, I This is my second Ronald Malfi book, both of which I've listened to on audio. My first was uh, Come With Me. And um, I picked this one up just because I, I really liked Come With Me and this was a five star read for me. I think Charles Constant, the narrator, did a wonderful job. Um, I think that it was a slow paced, tense book that did a wonderful job of blending thriller, horror, um, folk elements, and my favorite trope, which is this town is weird. I did attempt to then immediately follow that up with Black Mouth because it was on hold through Libby and I didn't I DNF'd Black Mouth uh like really early in like really early. I didn't I had an instant dislike of that book but this one was great um this one was great if you did try Black Mouth and that's your only Ronald Malfi experience I would encourage you to try Bone White because you might actually like that instead then I followed that up with Brother by Anya Alborn. I already did a review on this, so I'm not going to get too into it. I'm just going to say it was five stars. It was wonderful. And I will be doing a live with one of my friends on Book Talk uh, here soon where we're just going to discuss it once she is done reading the book. And then I switched over to spicy books. Um, so this is Riding the Headless Horseman by Molly Likovich. Liko and um, it's 53 pages of smut, and um, basically a woman woman meets the Headless Horseman and then they do it. It's fun, it's great for Halloween, it was a good time, I enjoyed it, four stars. After that, I read The Werewolf by Alma Katsu. Uh, this was 79 pages, um, and it is a short, short story, no novel, I don't know, whatever, um, about a village in Germany and uh, there are werewolves and it is kind of really depressing. I don't want to go into too many details because I honestly think that this is a book that is better or a story that is better if you go in blind because I basically went in blind. I didn't read the anything about it. I just saw the cover and I was like, okay, cool. I want to read that and I really enjoyed it. I think that not knowing what was going on really added to this. Um, I gave it four stars. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and bump that up to 4.5. There was just a little teeny tiny bit of something missing for me that didn't make it quite five stars, but it was still great. And then I read This Dark Comedy here. This is Ella Baxter's New Animal. Uh, this is about a woman who is a cosmetic mortician at her family's funeral home, and she escapes to Tasmania when her mother dies, and gets thrust into the world of BDSM and then things go weird from there. Uh, I did a full review on this, so I encourage you to go check it out. It is a great book. I highly recommend it. It has beautiful, heartbreaking moments, these profound quotes, and then scenes that are so awkward, you get secondhand embarrassment and have to put the book down. Um, so this is 4.5 stars for me and I definitely recommend it. The short story I read was Blood is Another Word for Hunger by River Solomon, who I love. Um, this was 32 pages and is another book that I, or short story that I went into blind. I don't know what it was this month. I just started picking stuff up and, and just reading it. Um, Basically, there is a connection to the other side. There is what I personally describe as body horror in that somebody gives birth to not quite babies multiple times. That's all I'm going to tell you just because I feel like some people might be very uncomfortable with that. So I just want to throw that out there. So uh, it was three stars. It was fine. Um, I liked where it was going. I, it was just, it was a good book or a good story, whatever. It was good, it wasn't great, basically. And then I did Blood Child, which is a short story by Octavia Butler and my first Octavia Butler experience, and I loved it. This was really good. It was 
I'm a bit confusing. I haven't even fully rated this yet, honestly. I'm, I'm gonna be real with you just because I don't quite know how I feel. I know I liked it. I know I enjoyed it, but I just don't know where I want to go in terms of reading this story. I, I am unsure. Sometimes it's fine to not know things, especially in these weird types of stories, but I just feel like we could have known a little bit more and it would have been more effective. Anyway, so then I went ahead and I read The Evening, The Morning, and The Night, uh, also by Octavia Butler, and I freaking loved this. Um, this is a dystopian, like, science fiction short story. It's 45 pages long. It's got this, like, creeping horror. Um, basically, there are people who are born with this genetic issue where they eventually try to hurt themselves and hurt others, and it's just a really bad situation. Um, but they discover that there are others that can, like, help. There are ways to manage it, basically. Um, but the way that this is told is just so creeping and casual that it makes it super effective. I loved I, 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 I wish I could experience this again. I really liked this. I'm, I, maybe nobody else will feel this way, but I just, there was something about this that was just, mmm. My final book of the month is a reread. It's Black Sunshine by Karina Halley. And um, I had read this a while back and I didn't really remember it, but I um, wanted to read the second. And so I'm, I reread this. I'm halfway through the second book, which is not as good as this one. This one I gave four stars. I might even bump it up to 4.5. Um, but I'm like halfway through the second and I'm not as enthused about it, but that happens with me sometimes. I'm a mood reader. It is who I am. It is what I do. It's a, it's basically a vampire romance with smut and, um, oh, she's strong, but she doesn't know it character and she's part witch, part vampire and there's enemies everywhere and there's a brooding dark vampire who kidnaps her and the adventure goes on from there. I like, I like, I like it. Is, is the dude problematic? Yes. Did I still like it? Yes. Time to move on to the books that I did after this month. The first is Man Made Monsters by Andrea L. Rogers. This basically follows a Cherokee family through a bunch of different short stories and there's werewolves and vampires and zombies and like all kinds of stuff. And the first half of this collection was perfection. It was beautiful. It was so good. Amazing. I mean, just phenomenal. And then we get to a story that is told in like second person and it was just downhill from there. It wasn't effective. It wasn't very good. I, I hated it. And then I kept trying to read and there was like one story after that that I thought was good. But then I kept reading these stories and I was like, I hate all these. And I quit. And then finally, The Demon's Bargain by Katie Robert. Uh, I love Katie. I did. I do not love this. I... I got about halfway through this. It's 132 pages. It was fine. It just was not one of those. Usually I'm like super invested in Katie's books. I am just like, I, I wasn't. I, I got again halfway through and I was like, I, I don't care. I don't care. The smut's not exciting anymore. I don't care. The relationship's not exciting. I don't care. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this rambling October wrap up. I hope you guys had a great month and uh, I will see you soon.